Okay, rocking and rolling. Hello, welcome to another little chat. I'm indoors again today in my little uh, writing room and it's the 1st of December. Um, see how things go with the new webcam, the new exciting webcam. And I know I've got a very cluttered background and stuff, but uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I guess that won't affect you. Um, and if you're finding this on the video, then yes, the audio is available as a podcast in all good podcasty places or on the website michaelcampling.com. So yeah, hopefully not looking quite so uh, scruffy today. Um, you know, perhaps I should wear a, wear, a, wear a tie and a jacket for these things, but um, that won't, won't affect you from the podcast. So um, just a quick uh, update on things. I have been... Um, recording some little thank yous to people who send me a mug of tea or other hot beverage uh, using the coffee.com uh, site and it just occurred to me I'd recently discovered about uh, Instagram reels and they're quite quick and easy to do so I've been recording them on there and keeping a list so um, if you follow me on Instagram if you look for Mikey Campling um, on one word you should be able to see it and you'll be able to find my reels there and I just uh, just doing individual little messages to say thank you and I'll do quite a few at first until I've gone right back through everybody who's ever sent me a mug of tea or uh, or coffee or whatever on uh, on coffee which if you're not familiar with it it's ko com. so a kind of a play on coffee um yeah it's a bit like patreon which a lot of people know about um and uh, people have been very very kind and um sent me contributions and uh, sent me mugs of coffee and tea to keep me going, keep me writing. So uh, I'm going back through everybody and recording um, messages as long as I can work out uh, a person's name because uh, for privacy reasons you're allowed to have them have them anonymously um, if you wish. But uh, yeah, I'll just use people's first name or initial or something, uh, whatever I've got rather than, uh, you know, uh, give everybody's full name because obviously nobody gave permission for that when they were donating because it wasn't a thing until just the other day. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, literally raising a, a mug to people um, when I am I'm having a having a hot beverage. I'm uh, just remembering to to record a, a little file, a little video, sorry, and uh, and put it on Instagram. So that's one little development. Otherwise, things are happening with the uh, the audio. I'm told is. Uh, Coming along, the uh, the chap called Ian Pringle, who's doing the narration, uh, sent me an email. Let me know he's um, he's getting on with things. Of course, um, I think everybody's getting used to the idea that one way or another, we're all getting affected with uh, the things going on in the world, aren't we? With various uh, viruses and things doing the rounds, and not just the not just the dreaded one that we all we all know and love, uh, but the um, but the other kinds of uh, nasty coughs and colds and things that are going around, which are possibly, a, you know, to do with the fact that we've uh, we've lived quite strange lives um, for quite a long time. But anyway, who knows? Um, and of course, it's winter here in the, in the UK and uh, people are doing their own of coughs and colds. And um, back when I was, uh, you know, you know how, how kids always get these things. Well, back when I was teaching, of course, uh, you work quite hard in the run up to Christmas, um, you know, doing putting all the plays and things, and then uh, you go on holiday, and guess what? You get it. You caught a cold from the kids. <laughs> cold for Christmas, anyway. It's just part of the part of the deal, part of the gig, I think. When you work with lots of kids, you get lots of sniffles. However, um, yeah, so that's on the way. the uh, The cover is just today we've got the cover for the audio book so that would be nice that'll be coming out soon um if there are any special offers to be had i will um i will let you know and if you're a subscriber to the newsletter and who knows i could put it in one of these chats as well if you don't get the newsletter i'll try and let people know i'm not very good at blowing my own uh, trumpet on these things but yeah i will try and let people know if there is an offer it'll probably be on uh, there's a website called chirp um where you can get audio books uh, it's good it's good um and there's uh there's ways on there that you know they, they do special offers usually i think for about a month if you're lucky enough um to grab one of those worth checking out if you listen to audiobooks um you know there are other places than than 
Amazon and uh, Audible and stuff to get your materials these days. There are lots and lots and lots of stores. For instance, I get my ebooks at Koba. Um, because as well as being a writer, I'm a reader too. And I, you know, I read every day. I read fiction. I, I don't like to have a day when I don't read fiction. I'm not much of a non-fiction reader. I, I dip into things as, as and when uh, needed. I like lots and lots of different things. I quite wide taste. I like really good stuff. I like quite a lot of classic stuff. And I like modern stuff. I like crime. I like all kinds of things. Uh, Sci-fi and things. I, I, I'll, read, I'll read anything that looks good. Uh, thrillers, of course. Anything, really. I'm not really a romance reader, but that's not, not a, a snobbery thing. It's just not really my cup of tea. Um, oh, I'm quite happy for... I don't know what you call that, relationship dramas. I'm quite happy to read that kind of thing. Um, yeah, quite interested in all that. The... Uh, I think that novels are good at when they're good novels. It's all about what makes people tick to me. That's what I like in a good novel. I like to uh, I like to kind of think about what makes people tick. And I I hope that comes across in my writing as well. Um, and that's possibly why I'm a bit slow um, compared to some people who can write, write very, very quickly. I mean, I'm, I'm probably faster than a lot of people, but uh, I, I'm slow compared to some. And that's because that is very important to me. Like this new book, it, you might be thinking, what on earth is he doing? And if you're looking forward to it, if you're waiting for it with bated breath, I'm sorry. It's taking me quite a while. I think it's going to be quite a long one. Um, but it's it's all to do with um, the way things are. People are changing. The relationships between them are changing. And that's because it's uh, the fifth book, uh, not counting um, the short story-ish type things that the two the two aren't there there's uh, the death at blackingstone rock and mystery at the hall both of which are kind of uh, much shorter and yeah um the fifth kind of major one um starting with a study in stone and i didn't want the characters to be uh static in that kind of james bond sort of way um it's, it's that's the that's the example writers often give when they say well the characters don't have to have a have a change they don't have to have one of these development arcs they can pretty much stay the same from one thing to the next and by and large that's what james bond has done over the years and that's what audiences like i guess um and i think if he ever um has any more kind of uh caring sides coming across um people have Boo hooed it and said, "No, no, we don't want that." Um, and but you know, I'm not getting into a thing about James Bond. I, I haven't watched the latest couple of films. Um, not really my thing. But um, I might have mentioned this before in another chat. Um, it seems familiar. That's the problem with these. Is that they're not really planned or scripted. They are just like me chatting, and uh, and like a normal person, I will probably repeat things that I've said before in a slightly different way. But never mind. So yeah, um, things are changing. The relationship between uh, between Dan and Alan is is changing as well. Things, everything's kind of ticking along, and, it, and so that means it kind of needs rethinking. I can't just sort of um, pop out another novel of more of the same. Um, again, I mean, I could, I suppose, uh, maybe if I was writing in a different way, perhaps under a pen name or something, which I've never done. Incidentally, if you're wondering, I've always written under my own name. Uh, I, I used to write under. Mikey and then I decided that you know because that's what friends call me as a lot of you all know but um, I decided I wanted my proper name on things my full name as in uh, which my full name be Michael Campling that's all there is to it and yeah I I didn't particularly want to go into that um, that kind of more of the same uh, like you know I mean I, I love Agatha Christie uh, books um, not so keen on a lot of the modern adaptations of them, but if you go back to the books and read them and just sort of enjoy the mystery, they, I wouldn't say they're exactly formulaic, but they're a bit more towards that way. You don't read them to kind of find out about Poirot's character. Um, he stays more or less the same through them. And uh, it's just a question kind of, and when you read one, you know what you're getting. And it's a question of waiting for the shoe to drop, isn't it? Waiting for the shoe to drop. That, uh, you know, sooner or later, as the characters are introduced, well, you think, ho, oh, oh, ho, one of them's going to be murdered and one of them's going to have done it. And, um, or some of them, perhaps. And these people will be red herrings. And we're going to get all those things. And we're going to get some people who are just caught up in it, who are, you know, uh, minor characters, perhaps. 
we're going to get all those things and it's just a question of where and when and, and who fills what role. Um, and I'm not quite doing that. Um, again, nothing wrong with it. It's just not quite what I'm doing. And because that wouldn't really be interesting to me, I don't think I could make it interesting to you. I mean, maybe, maybe in another bit down the line, you know, who knows, I might change tack and, um, and just do something different and uh, perhaps do something that is more along those lines. But I, I kind of doubt it. I, I tend not to make things simple. I'm not really a making things simple person. I tend to think, well, if we did this extra thing, if we you know added this extra complication, we could do this, that and the other. I tend to add things in and make them more complex as I go along. So um, that's just me. Uh, it's no point trying to trying to change it. I think you've got to write the story you want to write in the way you want to write it. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm sorry it's taking a while. Uh, before you know it, we'll be launching into Christmas and that will hold me up a bit even more, I guess. Um, but, you know, real life happens and uh, things have got to carry on and uh, as best we can. I've got to do things like, uh, you know, cook the dinner and walk the dog and all those things. So, yeah, Lottie is um, Lottie's going strong and I have uh, put her in some of the featured photos, which I posted up today, kind of taken um, somewhere today and somewhere a day or two ago, I think. So I always do them, um, the featured photos for each each week. I, I always do recent ones unless I tell you that they're old ones I I can't think of a time when I've done it but I guess there could be times when I pull up some older pictures but uh, no I um I don't cheat I, I put up the uh the recent some recent photos sometimes from my phone sometimes from a camera and um just put a caption and a few words at the beginning just just to liven it up a bit so I hope you like that people often tell me that they uh, they enjoy them and um yeah with all the various strange restrictions in recent times. A lot of them have been round here. <laughs> and I sometimes think, oh dear, these poor people, I'll be thinking, oh, another another picture of, of the Teen Valley and a load of fields and trees and stuff. But I mean, that's what I've got. So that's, <laughs> that's what I'm sharing with you. I'm, I'm very lucky. And it does look different. You know, it's it's great living somewhere like this in the countryside where you can, um, you can go and see the changes and you can see the seasons changing. Um, and we've still got a few leaves clinging on as we as we're going into December, but you know they are they are falling pretty rapidly. I like to catch an oak uh, oak leaf for good luck. Um, I'm not really that superstitious, but it's just kind of a thing I've done in recent years as I've caught one. Actually, always from the well, recently always from the same oak tree. But um, I asked it the other day for a leaf, and he he wasn't forth or he or she wasn't forthcoming. Um, so yeah, I haven't done that yet this year. So it'll have to have to be, have to be quick, or all have gone. <laughs> but um, yeah, lots of us have these superstitious things. Perhaps even though we're not superstitious, say I don't believe in any of these um, any of these things, and yet I still sometimes do things. I think a great many of us probably like touch wood and things like that. Which, if it worked, that would be great, wouldn't it? That would all be all we'd need to do. Is uh, <laughs> nothing bad would ever happen. Just carry a piece of wood around with us and go, oh, I'm fine, I've touched wood. So, you know, anyway, um, I wonder what the origin of that is. So, yes, another rambling chat and uh, a chance to try out the um, the new webcam. Looks pretty sharp to me. If you're watching on the video, I will put it on Facebook and YouTube. and I'll, I will put the YouTube on my site as well. Uh, I do actually have a better microphone back there, um, but uh, it's kind of huge, and I uh, this one seems okay for this, but uh, I, I might try another microphone. And uh, I was thinking as well, looking at Instagram, I might I might start um, sharing uh, books I've read and things like that because there's a lot of that on on there. I don't know if you if you're a keen reader and you like it. You will see it's quite a thing, this sort of bookstagram idea. And I think some people do it on TikTok, which I am not really uh, getting into. There's, um, I, I might, I did have an account somewhere. You will actually find an account on there, but I can't remember how to get back into it because I created it when TikTok 
was kind of launched. So I usually try and grab my name on all these things. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm i pretty good with keeping passwords, but I, I admit I blow it on that and I can't work out how to get back into it. Can't reset the password because it doesn't know what email address I used. Oh, I don't know what email address I used. So there's that. Um, but yeah, if people take really wonderful photos of books, um, I don't think I've got time to be quite as, so elaborate as some people are. They're obviously um, getting quite professional with them. You know, they're putting lots of props around and lots of things that are tying into the themes, themes and colours and stuff like that. But I, I don't think I'd do that. You know, just probably um, something fairly basic. But, you know, if you love books, it's nice to share them, isn't it? You might be able to see behind me if you're looking on YouTube. If I move around, you see some of my books. Um, and there's some of the old Penguin classics there with the green and white uh, spines, which were the... Um, I'm going to get these wrong now, aren't they? Were they the crime ones? I'm going to say they were the crime ones, but I'm trying to remember which were the orange ones. I guess I could go and have a look. So if the people in the podcast wait... Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, very bad, very bad form podcasting wise, but uh, I guess on the video you got to see me leaping about. Yeah, there's a Sherlock Holmes up there. So the green ones were crime, and the old penguin classics. Uh, really nice bit tatty mine, not exactly collector's items, but uh, they might be one day. Who knows? So I have probably rambled on for. Um, far too long and much beyond everybody's tolerance um so just kind of finish off and say thank you very much to everybody for listening and watching and if you've subscribed to the podcast that's fantastic there aren't many of you um uh, but uh i appreciate every single one of you all the more so uh that's always nice um i know these things are a bit rambling but if anybody, I've, I've said this before, if anybody has any questions or comments, anything they'd like me to talk about, that would be great because it would give me a topic and a subject and then I can uh, do something a bit um, a bit more interesting, if you like. And um, in the meantime, I'll keep just on doing these. I think the sound quality is certainly a lot better when I do them indoors. Uh, much as I liked uh, chatting as I walked over the hills, um, and I'm, I might do some again. Uh, that I had a lot of problem with um, with background noise and wind noise and all that kind of thing. So, uh, especially as it's winter. Hmm. Okay. So thank you once again for watching and listening, subscribing, supporting. A huge thank you collectively to everybody who's uh, sent me a mug of tea or coffee over on Coffee via my website, perhaps. But I will also be thanking you individually with a little um, video um, of me having a raising a cup in your in your honour. I'll try and make sure they're like slightly different. I mean, I had, I've got lots of mugs, so I can change the mugs and I can change the kind of tea I've got or the coffee. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've quite got enough types of tea. Although there are a lot available, of course. I, I could buy masses and masses of different kinds of tea, couldn't I? And then have a different one each time. I'm afraid I've done some so far. I've been with PG Tips, but um, it's kind of the <laughs> the one we've got hanging around, whatever that happens to be at the time. Um, other types of tea are available, as they always say on the BBC. Um, but yeah, no, nobody sent me any tea or anything. I mean, they, if you're if you're a manufacturer of tea and you want to send me some tea, fine, <laughs> that'd be lovely. <laughs> yes, if you're listening, Twinings, yeah, Earl Grey. Or anything like that. All very nice. Um, nobody ever sends me anything. I keep mentioning all these beers and breweries and things in the Devonshire Mysteries. Not a drop. You'd think somebody somebody'd find out, wouldn't you? And go, I oh, know. Let's send him some beer, and then maybe we'll get a mention. But no, nothing. Nada. One day, perhaps. One day, we'll have an official uh, official beer of Dan Corrigan um, brand, perhaps. <laughs> That'd be quite nice. Wouldn't it? It'd be great. It'd be great to have a, a Devonshire Mystery Ale. It'd be a great, could think of a really good name for it. An Embervale Ale. There you go. Look at that. Or Embervale, Embervale Bitter. Oh, no, that'd be, no, that's not the wrong tone, isn't it? Anyway, 
Nothing bitter in my mysteries, I don't think. I will definitely sign off. We've come up to 20 minutes. Thanks again and uh, look after yourselves. Take care and goodbye.